What's up, y'all? This is DJ Kenny Parker, DJ and producer for Boogie Down Productions slash KRS-One, and today I'm back with another story. Today's story is part of my series I call Epic Fails, When Hip-Hop Goes Wrong. Once again, the year was 1990, a few months before the events of my previous video about Nelson Mandela. Boogie Down Productions was embarking on a huge overseas tour, which included most of Europe and Asia. The beginning leg of the tour was in the UK. What some of you may not know is that when a group goes on tour, before you leave your home country, there's a lot of stuff you have to pack up and bring with you on the road. And a lot of decisions have to be made. Me being a young DJ, my decision was, what records was I going to bring with me on the road? Now, during that era, what you might have noticed is that when you went to a lot of hip-hop shows, before the concert started, there was usually hardly any music playing. And if it was, it was usually something that the sound man picked out to play before the show. Most hip-hop shows had sound men that did not listen to hip-hop. They were used to rock and roll or whatever other uh, genre that they uh, usually worked with. So, what you might get before a show could be any range of music. What I decided to do was take it upon myself to do a little DJ set to warm up the crowd before the performances. So, what I did before I left home was took a box of records with me overseas. Now, this box of records might hold 70, 80 records, so you had to be very particular with the records that you were going to bring. So, I packed up my record box and we headed overseas. Now, this was sometime early March 1990. We were about two shows into the tour, and uh, Queen Latifah happened to be on this particular bill. Queen Latifah opens the show and does a nice set. So now before Boogie Down Productions goes on, there's like a 30-minute break. So in this 30-minute break, I decide that I'm going to rock the crowd. Great. I get on stage, everybody's ready, I start throwing on records. Hit after hit, I'm killing them. I'm playing Public Enemy, I'm playing NWA straight out of Compton, I'm playing Third Base, I'm playing De La Soul, Buddy Killed Them, The Jungle Brothers, I'm throwing on all the hits of the era. Time is going by. My record collection is getting smaller and smaller. No KRS. 20 minutes goes by, no KRS. 30 minutes goes by, no KRS. My record box is getting smaller and smaller. 40 minutes goes by, no KRS. I'm down to my last two records. Crowd is ready. Throw on one record. It's rocking. Then, I have no more records left, except one. Now, let me backtrack a little bit. Before I left the U.S. to head on to the tour, I did a little research to see what were the hottest records in America and around the world. So I looked into the Billboard magazine, the industry standard, that had a chart of all the hot records in each country. Consistently on every chart, there was this one song that was either at the top of the chart or near the top of every chart in 20 countries. Some of these countries, this song was number one. After doing my research, I realized that this particular song was the number one song in the world at this time. So I said, I'm going to bring this song with me and I'm going to throw it on at some point when I get out to Europe. Fast forward to the party. I'm rocking. I have one song left. And it's this one record. The name of the song was Pump Up the Jam by the group Technotronic. Some of y'all can see where this is going. So for my last song, I dropped it. Boom. 
And soon as I drop the beat, you can see a change in the mood of the crowd. When the song said, pump up the jam, the whole crowd from front to back, from side to side, it was well over a thousand people in this place. At one time, in unison, went boom! The boos were so loud and consistent that it startled me. The energy almost blew me back. I was like, oh my God, what just happened? I immediately stopped the music. The boos were so loud that Queen Latifah actually came out of her dressing room to see what all the commotion was. So now I'm up there getting booed. I stopped the music and smartly I said to the crowd, y'all don't want to hear this, right? They said, no. And I said it again. Y'all don't want to hear this, right? They said, no. Now, while I'm saying, y'all don't want to hear this, right? In my mind, I'm going, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I have no more records left. I'm done. So by this point, I had a little pile of records by my foot that I had already played all over the place. Luckily, there was a guy named Jay who was a DJ that I had met the night before at our previous performance. He's standing right next to me, but a little ways down. So he picks up a record from the pile of records that I had by my foot and hands it to me and says, yo, play this right here. They love this record out here. What record was it? It was Straight Outta Compton by N.W.A. I said, yo, I already played this. He said, no, play the other side. You didn't play this yet. I took the record. I flipped it over. And actually, on the other side of Straight Out of Compton was the double A side, which was a song called Express Yourself, which happened to be my least favorite record on that iconic NWA album. So I was like, Express Yourself? Really? But what else was I going to do? By this point, Already 15, 20 seconds of silence had passed and the whole crowd was just staring at me. So I took Express Yourself, put it on a turntable, and threw it on. As soon as the beat dropped, the whole crowd said, Ho! Oh! And then when the words came, they went crazy like they had been waiting for this song all night. Woo! I breathed a sigh of relief. I was back in business. Still, I only had that one song left. So while Express Yourself was playing, KRS-One finally decides to come out of the dressing room. I don't know if it was actually time to start the show or if he mercifully saw me up there dying and decided to come get me. Either which way, by the time Express Yourself finished playing, Chris is at the side of the stage and it was time to start the BDP show. My next record was the BDP intro. Chris comes on stage, everybody goes crazy, the show was great, and all was good. After the show, we get back to the dressing room and everybody is Dying laughing. KRS goes, what the hell were you thinking throwing on Pump Up the Jam at this show? I was thinking, hey, this is the number one song in the world. Little did I know at that time, because I was a young DJ, that the hip hop world is completely different than the rest of the world. The hip hop world is like a separate universe in the MCU. <laughs> in the hip hop world, especially at that time, pop music was a no, no. That would be the equivalent of by today's standards, the number one song in America right now is by an artist named Taylor Swift. That would be the equivalent of me throwing on a Taylor Swift record in the middle of a hardcore hip hop jam. Bargain. Of course, 
KRS-One has never let me live this down. If anyone ever asks KRS-One, has BDP ever been booed, he will say, BDP has never been booed. In over 35 years, we have never been booed. Then he'll stop and pause, and then he'll go, wait, there was this one time when Kenny got booed, and he'll burst out laughing. Ah, <laughs> what was I thinking? Anyway, to wrap up the story, about a year later, KRS-One was having a meeting at the studio about doing a remix for a rap artist. So I happened to be in the studio with Chris. We're all there chilling. And who walks into the studio but the female MC, Ya Kid K. For those of you that don't know, Ya Kid K is the MC who wrote and performed Pump Up the Jam. She was not in the video, another Millie Vanilli type situation. However, she was now working on her solo album and she was potentially going to use KRS-One to produce a track. So there she was, right in the studio. So she goes into the room and Chris looks at me and I look at Chris and we burst out laughing. So I said to Chris, yo, should I tell her the story? And Chris goes, hell no. <laughs> we started laughing again. So I never told her the story. I don't know if Yai Kid K ever heard what happened. Maybe she'll find out right now if she happens to see this video. Yai Kid K, if you're watching, shout out to you. Shout out to your song, Pump Up The Jam, a song which I actually still like. Um, and for everybody else out there, I hope you enjoyed this little episode of Epic Fails. Stay tuned for Epic Fails Part 3, which is coming right up. Until then, 